All right, everyone, welcome to MD Prospect. So today I'm gonna do a Anki walkthrough. I'm just gonna do like a 10 minute uh, live Anki with me kind of video where I show you what uh, my workflow is like, how I answer questions, how I set up my Anki deck and everything. So uh, I personally didn't use Anki during school year um, because all the pre-made decks were made for USMLE and I wasn't really studying for that uh, during my clerkship so I just started doing it uh, this summer. I'm watching Boards and Beyond videos and then I'm doing Anki questions after uh, and I have it lagged so that after I watch my videos the questions pop up probably like a week after so I'm, I gave myself enough time to forget so that I learned by doing Anki questions. I'm using Lightyear deck which matches the Boards and Beyond uh, videos. Um, for in medical school, they these students made all the uh, pre-made decks, so all the questions are made using those those videos and using the uh, Pathoma uh, textbook and first aid textbook. So I'm just using decks that other students have created already. And I downloaded this add-on called a heat map and it just basically shows you your progress, keeps you accountable for uh, how you're doing. It shows you uh, the amount of reviews that you have to do in the future. And then uh, I've been kind of messing around with Anki over here uh, where I didn't really know whether I was gonna use it or not, whether this was the right deck for me. And then this particular week I started going pretty hard and I'm gonna continue until I write my test in December sometime. So let's go through it. Also know that I'm an international medical student, um, so I'm not going through the exact US curriculum, so I may be pretty weak in answering these questions, so bear with me, I may come across stupid, but I uh, just wanted to show you uh, my workflow. First of all, before I start, let's just do this question first. Pheochromocytomas are associated with which gene mutations? Uh, NF1, von Hippel-Lindau, and ret mutations i believe yeah so for these i want to briefly touch on again good and easy so again i only press if i guess a question and get it wrong or if i don't guess it at all and good uh, i only press it if i answer the question correctly and i'm not i'm still having kind of hesitations despite having it answered correctly and i only press easy if i know that for sure i can remember this I have it set it as three months down the road. One of the things that I found troublesome with the default option for Anki is that you see again at less than one minute, good at 15 minutes and easy at like four days. And that became too problematic because the reviews kept on piling up and in one day I would have to do like, I don't know, 100 and 200 reviews plus 100 new cards per day and that keeps on piling up. And when you're working with Anki, you either sacrifice time or frequency so they're in, in kind of a spectrum so if you prioritize time and see these cards less you will see those cards less frequently and if you decide to see cards more frequently you will sacrifice time and you will have increased volume and i can't really recommend this to you guys because no one actually has done it before it's just a setting that i set for myself that works for me i don't know if the actual algorithm that anki has figured out will apply in this particular case but it's so far so good but i've been, but again I'm, i've been only using this for about um about three weeks so I don't want to say that I recommend this for now. But if you are curious, here is the um, setting that I set for myself for this particular deck. So if I go to options here, so I have it as, so I it's still a default, but I changed it, changed the steps. So 2,500, 30,000, 99 new cards per day, 99 days, 99 easy intervals, starting needs 250. Reviews I have it at maximum so that I review as much card review all the cards that I have to review for that day. Easy bonus interval, I kept it the same. Maximum interval 9999. Uh, lapses 15, 5, 2, general 60 seconds description. So that's the setting that I have. Alright, so we answered this question. So this one I knew, but I know that I can't remember this in three months, so I have to press spacebar so that uh, I see this again in at a good interval. At puberty, testosterone causes closure of epiphyseal plate via conversion to estrogen. Yeah. So the good thing about that, the light year deck or pre-made decks is that they have all the information on here from the first aid textbook. 
uh, that I can that if I get the question wrong I can read more about it and then move on to the next question so this one I answered good so 21 days carbon dioxide binds to hemoglobin at um, at the end terminus and terminus of globin. Yeah, answer that. What are locations of metastasis from lung cancer? So they are adrenal, adrenal glands, um, brain. You have liver and you have bone. Yeah, so I answer that one. So I, I know that I can't answer this three months, so I'm gonna press good. Which type of thyroid cancer is associated with Pax 8 P P A Y? I don't even know how to pronounce this. Like these minor details for step one, it's it's what makes this test so useless. <laughs> um, because I know that I'm not gonna use this clinically. Like if I'm going into a surgical specialty that has nothing to do with thyroid cancer, I know that I, after I write this test, I'm just gonna throw this out of my memory. Follicular carcinoma. I don't know. I'll probably answer this again. Which asthma drug is rarely used due to the narrow therapeutic index and cytochrome P450 metabolism? Which asthma drug is rarely used due to the narrow therapeutic index? I have no idea. Theophylin. Okay. Again. What is the histologic finding of neuroblastoma? It's like Kimmelstein Wilson, I think. Oh no, that's totally wrong. Okay, so Homer writes Rosetta. So I got that wrong. I remember this picture. Uh, but I associate it with something else. I think Kimmelstein Wilson is um, some other um, like uh, pulmon pulmonary related histological finding, but Homer Wright Rosetta. So I got that wrong and I want to associate this with this picture. So I'm trying to think about a, um, like an interesting way that I can connect it. Homer, I'm thinking like Homer Simpson and Homer Simpson and that picture somehow I got to connect it. Um, I don't know, Homer Wright Rosetta's. It kind of looks like Rosetta's neuroblastoma. So that if I see that picture on a test, that I can associate Homer Wright Rosetta's. I don't know, I guess I'll just, what, let's see what they have to say here. HVA, homovanillic acid and VMA in urine. Homer Wright Rosetta's, characteristic of neuroblastoma, medulloblastoma, well, associated with overexpression of N NYC. Okay, all right, again. Which conditions are most com are common to M two A and two B? I think they are um, they are parathyroid related, parathyroid and uh, medullary carcinoma or follicular carcinoma. Oh, yeah, Medu oh, yeah. Babe, I'm filming the video. <laughs> or follicular carcinoma, but I think it's medullary carcinoma. And then the next is pancreas is MEN1. Um, there's some one other P that I can't remember. Pheochromocytoma. So medullary thyroid, so it was medullary, not follicular. Medullary thyroid carcinoma, pheochromocytoma. And I basically remember this by picturing this particular circles, the Venn diagrams in my mind. So I reviewed this again because I had trouble getting to it. So thyroid, medullary carcinoma, pheochromocytoma, mucosal neuromas. All right, so as you can see, my option still has some kinks that I need to work over. So ideally this should say two months, three months, and then I don't know, six months, because this is a, this probably third or fourth time that I'm seeing this card. So I'm gonna press good, and then I'll change the settings later so that I can fix that. <laughs> This is why I don't recommend this particular option deck to you guys. All right, if I work this kink out, I will make an updated video and then share with you guys later. Which endocrine condition decreases the synthesis of sex hormone binding globulin? Which endocrine condition decreases the synthesis of sex hormone binding globulin? All right, so sex hormone binding globulin is decreased, is increased with estrogen. So any condition that decreases estrogen will decrease sex hormone binding globulin. What decreases estrogen? Um, estrogen is decreased when the FSH and LH are decreased, which means the GnRH is decreased. If GnRH, what decreases GnRH? Prolactinomas can decrease GnRH, and prolactinomas are stimulated by TRH, uh, thyroid, 
uh, I forgot what TRH stands for. Anyways, TRH, if there's increase in production of TRH, then prolactin, uh, something like a pro increase in prolactin secretion will occur. So what causes increase in TRH? would be um, hypothyroidism, so hypothyroidism, yeah. So I can work it through like this, but obviously this is not quick enough for a test, so I need to figure out a faster way that I can uh, answer this question. So hypothyroidism um, causes decrease in synthesis of sex hormone binding globulin. So I'll try to remember it just quickly like that. But I answered this question correctly, but I know that I, I might forget it three months down the road, so I'm just gonna press good. Hypothyroidism can cause secondary amenorrhea because it again increases TRH, increases TSH, increases prolactin, prolactin release, which decreases, suppresses GnRH. So hi. Oh, so I got that wrong. So it's both hypo and hyper. I actually don't understand why hyperthyroidism will cause secondary amenorrhea. So I can go to Google and figure out uh, why um, they. Why they? Why it's like that? Uh, but let's see. Uh, hyperthyroidism. Um, secondary amenorrhea. Secondary amenorrhea. So thyroidism gland that is overactive or underactive can cause menstrual irregularities, including amenorrhea, pituitary tumors. Secondary amenorrhea associated with hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroid. Can hyperthyroid affect menstruation? I should probably look at the Boards and Beyond um, PDF file. I can't find it right now, so I'll just do it later. All right, let's just move on. Again, because I got it wrong. What causes hypoxemia in chronic bronchitis? What causes hypoxemia in chronic bronchitis? Um, shunting because bronchitis blocks off the airway and the blood passes through but there's no air exchange so that's called shunting yeah so good what are the treatments for cyanide toxicity thiosulfate nitrites and cobalux something I can't remember nitrite thiosulfate and hydro hydrox hydro hydro my God, hydroxocobalamin, cobalamin. I don't, know if, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. So cyanide, nitrite, thiosulfate, hydroxocobalamin. I think that's, cobalamin has something to do with vitamin B, so. Uh, okay, I'll try to remember that. So I got it wrong, press again. What is the mechanism of action of epiprostanol? I'm so bad with pharmacology, but I'll try to see. I think this is an asthma drug mechanism of action, but something that has to do with uh, endothelin, no, not endothelin, but I can't remember. Prostacycline analog with vasodilatory effect. So I got this wrong and I have to understand why, so I'm just gonna read through this. Prostacycline analogs uh, with direct vasodilatory effects of pulmonary. So if you have asthma, if you got to vasodilate uh, pulmonary and systemic arterial vasovascular beds, inhibit platelet aggregation, side effects of flushing jaw pain. Examples are iloprost and apoprostanol. Okay, so prostacycline analog with vasodilatory effects. Again, all right, fasting blood glucose greater than, okay, so one, another thing with USMLE is that everything is in US values, which is milligrams per deciliters, deciliters. Um, and in Canada, we use millimoles per liter, and it, it's like, I can't remember this, but it's completely useless in Canadian settings. So, I, I, but I think this is um, 123 or something, 126, good enough, it's good. Which thyroid condition has IgG4 plasma cells? Thyroid condition that has IgG4, not Graves. Riddell's thyroiditis. Yeah, so good. Pseudo hypoparathyroidism is due to abnormal. some calcium sensing receptor in the kidneys. Oh, abnormal parathyroid hormone receptors. So unresponsive to kidneys to parathyroid hormone hypocalcemia despite high parathyroid hormone levels. Okay, so. So, so I'm trying to remember what pseudo hypoparathyroidism is, and it is when you have um,
there is a lot of parathyroid, but it's pseudo hypothyroidism because um, it's fake that it's pseudo. It's fake that it's hypo because there is actually a lot of parathyroid. Now that I kind of implanted that in my mind, I can understand it. Now it's just a matter of remembering it. I got this question wrong, so I'm gonna press again. All right, so I think that's enough for all my Anki questions today. I think, I hope it was helpful um, in terms of like showing you how I go through my questions. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more of these kind of videos that I can put, put out in the future. Um, all right, have a good day.